Jesus. I want to thank everyone for watching the Revival is Here TV program that goes over there and on the Revival is Here TV network on the Roku box and on the website and everyone that watches live on the live stream. If you're watching, uh, we live stream the services. We have services every Sunday night at 6.30. We live stream those over the internet worldwide on all devices and even on the, our Revival is Here TV network on the Roku uh, box. We have over... Well over uh, 3,200 subscribers just to the TV network. So uh, and that's really good. And uh, we had to pay for the streaming service to be able to stream over the, our TV network and all devices. And uh, you go to revivalishere.org forward slash live dash stream to watch the live stream on the website. And you can watch it on your mobile devices. We have a uh, desktop computer that we upload three different quality streams. So you can, you can uh, watch it on your mobile device, and uh, which you can watch it on HD. We stream HD now. So that's a good thing, really. I'm, I want to praise the Lord for that. Amen. And um, if you want to donate online, you go to revivalishere.org forward slash donate, or you can mail your donation in the Revival is Here Church, P.O. Box 243, Bedford, Kentucky, four zero. 006, and there's a verse in the Bible that says, uh, well, have you robbed me? They've robbed me with their tithes and offerings. So uh, don't rob God. And uh, if you get blessed by this, so in an offering. I know I might have lost some people with that, but that's Bible. And uh, Amen. of course, we meet at the uh, Quality Inn now. It's the same uh, hotel as the Comfort Suites. They just changed over names. Quality Inn in LaGrange, Kentucky. It's 1500 East Crystal Drive, LaGrange, Kentucky, 40031. So I encourage you, if you can, to come on out and be a part of what God is doing. Or if you can't, watch a live stream. We try not to keep you too long during the winter time. So uh, come on out and be a part of what God is doing. If you have to leave early, we understand. As long as you don't walk out. I got the gift of discernment, so I'll know if you walk out angry or if you just have to leave. Trust me, I'll know by looking at you. That's called the gift of discernment. So don't try to fool me because it's hard to fool me. I'm not trying to brag. I'm just telling you facts. I can know when someone's looking at me if they're upset at me. That's called the gift of discernment. And uh, we need more of that in the church. Amen. 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 And uh, I'm going to share something before we uh, get into some prayer requests here. And I'm going to preach a very uh, short sermon. And um, I had a dream vision last night. I was, I guess, asleep. But this wasn't a dream, this was a vision. I was interacting with it, I thought, and asked questions. I had a conversation with my mom in that dream. And there was, um, Janet Wilcox was there and I had a conversation with her and I knew what I was saying. This wasn't like I was watching it, I knew what I was saying and I intentionally said what I said. And I was thinking. And her family was there and uh, there was someone that I used to go with that used to be married to Joe uh, Shuck well, he passed away, but Dolores, she was there in the dream, in the vision. And uh, I'm not sure if this was our future building. It was a nice church building. It was the prettiest design church building on the inside I've ever seen in my life. It was big. I remember in this dream talking to someone saying, this is bigger than the Evangel Bill Town Road, isn't it? And they said, yes, this will hold more people than the Evangel Bill Town Road. Whoa. And I was talking to my mom, and in the back, it had, in the very back of the church, they had like a here seats, here seats, up here seats, different levels like that. It was designed to specifically to hold more people and uh, had like a row here, you know, several, a group, several, like five rows of chairs or seats, a good, you know, amount of seats. And I remember looking at this and I was talking to my mom and I was, and I was saying, you need to remember how these seats are. And this was a conversation, and I had this thought. This wasn't like something that, that I was uh, seeing. I, mean, I was seeing it, but it, I was there. It's like I went forward in time. And I had this thought of remembering how the seats were, and I had seats, several like rolls here, like, and several here, like this. This is in the back. And I had something that's up like this, several here, then up here, and I had the audio back in the back. I had an audio booth. And they had a row here like this, and they had some goes down like this for the front. Beautiful podium. 
And this is the prettiest church I've ever seen. I've never seen one designed like that. It was beautiful. And um, the place was packed. And the biggest thing I remember was looking from the pulpit towards the, towards the back. It's the biggest how I was interacting in the vision. And um, this was a real, this really happened. I, I, it wasn't a dream. This was something that happened. I guess it was, I went forward in the future or maybe it was something in heaven. I don't know. But I remember interacting with my mom and, and I remember was saying, uh, saying, and we was talking, I said, this is a va- bigger than the Vangel Bell Town Road the current one that they have there. And uh, I was talking to, to Janet and her kids was there and uh, some other people and, uh, that I knew, and it was packed. And uh, I don't know if that's a future building. Of, I don't, this, if it is the future church of revival, it's your church, it will not be the final one because the final one was much bigger than even that that I've seen. If, if we go that we're keep on course and don't give up, that we're revival, where God wants us to go. Just because it don't happen doesn't mean it's not a real prophecy. That means sometimes people get in the way. Yep. And uh, that's prop- prophetic word is really God's will. Uh, and it's declarations. And uh, just God can give a word for someone that, uh, that he's going to use them great and do great things. And if they don't see it, if it never happens, a lot of times it's because of they, they're, just, they're not fully surrendering to walk into that. For some reason, Reinhard Bunke said that he was the second one that God called to do it. And he wasn't the first one. The other one that God called the, to uh, do what he did, he, they didn't do it. Reinhard Bunke was the number two choice. Guess what? He did do it, though, didn't he? Amen. And there was another pastor that God gave this uh, man or as a pastor of a church or something. I can't remember it. He gave God pr- pretty much like this dream, visions, plans for a church, and uh, like the vision I had. And uh, God just laid it out how the design of the church and everything, and he didn't ever did do, I think he had blueprints drawn up, but he didn't do anything with it. And he went to this another church years down the road, and that was the exact church that God told him to build, and God ended up giving it to somebody else the same vision, the dream, yeah. to do it Amen. because he didn't do it. And uh, so that's real important that we need to stay the course. And uh, this was a real dream, and I, I'm, I'm a vision person. I hear from God sometimes audibly, sometimes within me, I know, and uh, I I see a lot of visions and dreams, and uh, I see visions and dreams, and like I said before, like in Joel, it talks about the young man shall shall see visions, the old man shall dream dreams, that doesn't mean if you see dreams that you're old, and and if you see visions you're young, that doesn't mean that. That's saying that well. That's that's not saying that you can only do your age is how the gifts that you get. That's not saying that. Nope. That's saying God's going to use everybody. Yeah. So I don't want to hear hear that wrong teaching, wrong translation of well, you know, you're old if you have the dreams. That doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean that at all. And uh, but uh, I'm a talk. I you know I have I I guess I've seen all of the. Gifts of the Spirit, I flowed in at one time or another. And uh, that was prophesied over me by Eric Lynn when I was a young, young man, young boy, and went to Children of the King. And uh, I can't remember if it was Brother Nick. We told everybody to pray for everybody, grab someone and pray with them and say a word for them. And Eric Lynn said he's seen all the gifts and all that God has opened up to me like a book. All I had to do is grab a hold of it. And another, as soon as I got born again, there was this man, and I can't remember who it was. He was a guest speaker at Children of the King, and then it was packed, and uh, it was pretty full. And this was years ago, years ago, I was young, young boy. And he called me to the front, and he said, God's going to show you some things, and you're going to see things in a vision God's going to show you. And it's, I remember this prophecy, and I was young. They had it long, they used to have it on the audio recording. And I don't think I still, Mary Jane had it, I know. And, uh, and he said, uh, you're going to, God's going to show you things, and you're going to see things like you're looking through a window. It's going to be that clear. He said, he will not show you now because you will immediately backslide and never go to church again. It will be so big. But in the future, when you're ready, God's going to show you things. I know I, ha- and I, I understood that what that meant because I did see, I believe now, to be Jesus when I saw Jesus when I was a kid. And he was well, just seen this white, and I was so startled I wasn't ready for that. And I was really started, startled, scared of the spiritual things 
when I was younger. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but I was. And uh, I screamed, and Mom woke up, and she and the proof that it was something physically there. Mom saw it too, but then it immediately disappeared. He immediately disappeared. Remember that? It was there because she saw a glimpse of it, and when I screamed, she got up. It was there. It wasn't a vision. I mean, it wasn't nothing that was just for me. I mean, it was physically there, and uh, and it scared me because I wasn't ready. Like a guy said, uh, you know, you got to be ready, ready. And there's a milk of the word, and there's a meat of the word, and and uh, sometimes God will let you do uh, see a little bit of glimpses when you're not ready, just to kind of get you hungry for more of that in the future. And I did shut that down for a long time. You can shut gifts down. You can fish. You, 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 you yourself can shut gifts down. You can Amen. shut gifts of the spirit down. People shut tongues down. They have tongues, but they they'll, they'll shut that gift down, or they'll they'll feel like um, what they say is in tongues because they're going by how someone else prays. I've heard someone pray in tongues that it was just a bunch of noise. But, and they thought that they didn't have the gift of tongues. I heard them praying in tongues when they was out under the power in the old location. I heard them very good tongues. And, but it was a bunch of stammering. But it says stammering lips in the Bible. It talks about that. So everybody has different tongues. And uh, you can shut that gift down because you don't feel that that's real that, or, or you feel that it's something else and it should be. Everybody will use gifts of the Spirit differently. And they'll flow, and you hear from God. Some people, you can hear an audible voice, and sometimes you won't. And uh, I know this one guy was um, friends with, uh, what's it, Bob? The prophet that passed away. What was his name? Was it Bob Jones? Yes. And uh, he was, I'm going to tell you, there was no prophet in this modern times except William Branham like Bob Jones. And William Branham got in some sketchy teachings there after a while, but he, he, he was a prophet. But Bob Jones was, he, I'm telling you, you could have a dream, and he'll call you at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and without you saying a word, he'll tell you that dream that you had and told you, tell you what it means. He'll tell you the conversations you had with people. And be right on the dot. And this guy, he was staying, he, he invited himself over to stay at this one guy's house. He said, I'm coming over to stay a few days. And uh, he was in the other room sleeping, but this guy was laying in bed with his wife and woke up, and Bob Jones was right in his face in bed with him. And it happened again. And, uh, and uh, God, uh, I think it was Bob Jones told him, he said, because we're going to be in the ministry together. We're going to be in bed together, be in the ministry together. And uh, things like that. God will tell you different ways, and you got to know how to interpret that. And... Uh, and um, we just got to know how to interpret things. And that, that church, I believe, is for us. And uh, I, I claim it. It's really nice. It's, it's a very, it's not just your church that like here and you have your balcony. It has all kinds of different places, different areas to sit. It was really nice. And it was specifically designed to get maximum amount of people in it. It was designed that way. And... Uh, so I claim it, and uh, I, I know my mom claimed it because she was in that vision. She was, I was interacting with her. Did you have the same one vision? Because you was in the vision with me, and I talked to you. And so it could have been an angel taking mom's form and, you know, talking to them. Sometimes that will happen. Some people think that they see their loved ones when they're dead, but it's uh, an angel could take your, their form and talk to you because I believe once you're dead, you're going to be in heaven. You won't want to come back and just to talk to someone down here. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I got news for you. If I pass away before any of y'all do, don't think I'm going to come down and talk to you. I love y'all, but I'm not going to do it. Because <laughs> I'll be in heaven. I'll be talking to Jesus. We have a lot of, we have a talking to here, of course, but we're going to have a lot of catching up to face to face when you get up there too in heaven. Amen. Amen. I got some, uh, there's a prophecy I got. Someone gave me uh, for, on my birthday. Here it said, Chan, happy birthday. You are a delight to, to heaven and a valuable part of the community of believers. We bless this year of your life to be a treasured time of fulfilling with intense love from your father who is so crazy about you and a sweet time with brothers and sisters who walk with you in joy too. So this is for everybody here. 
I hope Amen. your day is great and full of life. That was a word that someone gave me for, a, for this coming year of my life. And of course, I, I turned it in December, so it would be from December to December. And, uh, of course, that goes along with what God told me about the, this coming year and the breach. And uh, here's another one God gave me, and I've read this before, but I'm going to read this again. This is, someone uh, gave this to me, a word, and I'm just want a reminder to stir that, uh, keep the vision before you, it says in the Bible. And without a vision, people perish. Amen. So uh, I've never wanted to or intended to have a ministry or a church that reached out worldwide. That never was my goal. I just wanted, I know I was supposed to be a pastor. And I know I was supposed to put stuff on the website. I did every step I did according to the steps that God told me to do. I just started a website first. Then I started a podcast. Then we got the, the LLC. Then we got the ink and tax exam. And uh, then we got on television. Well, I did a radio uh, before that, before we got inked, I did an internet radio. Then God told me to do, because God told me to do radio, so I did. And then he told me to do ink, get it inked and not in the tax exempt. We did that, and he told me to get on this um, cable channel, so we did that. Did that. Then he told me to get on the over the air and drop the cable channel, so I did that. And... Uh, that, but we started a church. I started a church before that, a little bit before that. So um, I did it every step of the way. We did it. I did it. And we all did it in God's plan. And uh, someone that was bragging that they got it, their church got tax exempt. A brother here was saying that a church got tax exempt. And they was bragging that it took them six months to get tax exempt. And we got it in 30 days. So... <laughs> That's pretty much the time it took to get that paperwork and the time to us to get it pretty much in the mail. So uh, I don't want to keep you much longer here, and uh, I want to read those prayer requests too. Try to get that over the, on the, over the air if we can, if we have enough time on the program. You are about to break into a new thing. It will start off very small, and only a few will come. It will be a very humble and small work. This was a word that someone gave me a long time ago from God. I want y'all to hear this. I see humble beginnings because you will be found faithful. God will entrust you with much. There is a grace upon the small things which you are doing which will grow into massive responsibility and influence. You are planning small things today, but God will, God says you will sit with him and co-labor with him over entire nations. It's almost like you will be involved in a planning committee with God himself. You call yourself an evangelist, which that was before the church. This was a long time ago. When in fact you are... A, an apostle in the true sense of the word. I don't call myself an apostle. I'm just reading you what they, they spoke over me. You have an apostolic anointing to shift entire atmospheres over huge geographic areas. That's what apostle is. It's, it's a, they can have the authority over areas, huge areas to shift things. Like Paul, he was had authority over areas. God sent him to Mas, you know, the Macedonian call and these other areas. Amen. He had, a, he was an apostle. He had authority over areas, Amen. spiritually. Your faithfulness is magnetic to His favor. This was a word that God didn't give to me personally. This was from someone else to me. This was a long time ago, and this is very true of. of I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to brag about myself with the other, but I'm going to say right now that this is very true with the first part of this. Very true. And I gave this to everybody a while back to take home. I don't know if y'all still have the copies. I got some more over here. And I uh, charge you $10 for, for losing the other. No, I'm not going to make it. The words that people have, been, have spoken over me, Jake spoke the same, uh, basically, to Brother Jake, um, 
spoke the same thing about, um, I just felt led going into this. I don't, don't really don't want to take a lot of time, but this is the way I feel. And uh, Brother Jake said that he see me having a Rambo in the morning, like to take areas in the fight, you know, and to take areas, you know, different areas and stuff like that. I have it on the, the uh, web, the YouTube, actually, if you want to watch that prophecy. And Sister Shikes said that, you know, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. No one can stop it, you know, and stuff. In other words, it would be difficult, but it, it's, it'll grow and it'll be worth it. Any good thing that starts out difficult and you get discouragement um, um, it takes work you listen to all, all these that um, catch the fire but now what it used to be Toronto Airport Christian uh, Toronto Airport Vineyard Church and went to Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship John Arnon he started out very very small and they have a pretty big church and they've influenced worldwide Every, every spirit-filled church in the world has some kind of a, they've influenced in some way every spirit-filled church in the world and every ministry somehow. Anybody that talks about revival, that church has influenced it, regardless of what people want to say or not. And they started out small. We've had with people from around the world, and you pull up the map, it's all around the world. And on last year, I pulled up on the Google Analytics thing. It, it, it tell you the areas. I can't see who, of course. But Egypt was the number one country last year. Amen. Beat every other country, clearly. And uh, if you look on the areas, it's a lot of it's the government area in Egypt. <laughs> so <laughs> but we're reaching. We do have influence. And uh, more than probably most churches here, at least in this area, more than any church in this area, but probably most in, the, in America. Really, and uh, there's just anointing we have for those areas. And, uh, and uh, God told me while I was sitting over here is uh, we have an area that's called the Bible Belt. It's called in America a Bible Belt, where you always tend to see, um, think of large churches in the, the Bible Belt and growth in the Bible Belt and mega churches in the Bible Belt, you know, good things in the Bible Belt, you know. But God said that there's going to be other areas that he's going to raise up that will be called the Bible Belt. That he's going to shift. There's going to be a shift. That he's going to focus on, on some other different people and areas because there's some un, uh, uh, areas that traditionally are revival areas that traditionally for God have become uh, cold and stale, and uh, Amen. they've gone away from uh, the spirit moving and other things. So he's going to shift his focus to other areas to reach out, and they the other areas that would would that would generally the ones that the, the Bible about to reach out to these areas, you know, folks reaching out a missionary wise, they're going to, these areas that was, was traditionally the areas that got missionaries, people to come in are the ones that are going to send them out. It's going to be a shift, it says, God Amen. said. It's going to be a shift to where they're going to be the senders, not the receivers. And it's better to give than to receive, it says in the Bible. And, and, and it goes with money and other things. And they're going to be the ones that are going to send money and people. Instead of being the ones that are called the users, they're going to be, there's, there's a shift that's going to happen. I left them. That's okay. Easier to sort through them. Okay, I'm going to go through these pretty quick. Uh, have one here from Sandra. Uh, and she's asking for prayer for a female friend. And Luthia, Lithuania. Lithuania. Yeah, that, that's right. That place. Lithuania. Wow. Says uh, she's accepted Christ, but she still needs prayer. And uh, we pray that uh, her hunger for God's presence and word will just grow in her. Amen. <clears throat> Uh, have one here that's actually uh, to Pastor Chan. She, they are. Uh, he is a evangelist in India. We're going to call him Pastor John. Pastor John, we we're praying for you and your ministry, and we pray that. Uh, your word will go out in India and, and 
save many souls. India. Uh, this one here is from Mary Ramina. I presume this pronunciation is close, not correct, but close. And uh, she has asked prayer for uh, several things, people in her home, her family, and uh, just a, a bunch of stuff. We've got several pages from her in the past week or so, so we uh, will lift up Sister Mary. Uh, we have here from Manga, and I'm not going to pronunciate the last one, don't know what it is. Uh, please pray for me as I have established a business and promised and agreed with my family to support God's mission in evangelism. Praise God, brother. You just keep uh, Amen. you keep your word to God, and He Amen. will bless you. Amen. You take care of God, and He'll take care of you. Amen. Amen. He'll bless your family for it. Uh, this one is from Pastor Augustine. And uh, he has asked... Well, let's see. He has a ministry called Grace Ministry. He is in a foreign country. I'm going to spell it because I don't know exactly how to say it. It's B-U-R-U-N-D-I. Burundi. Burundi. That's close, I think. Well, anyhow... Uh, we will keep you lifted up, brother, for you and your ministry. And uh, your radio broadcast and your revival meetings that you have. And uh, he goes to prisons. Praise God. We need all the prison ministries we can get here in the U.S. and across the world also. Uh, this one is... Pastor Kuomi Nestor, and I can't even get close to the last name, and uh, he is a minister uh, of evangelism. He uh, works in a lot of small villages and towns 